In the beginning of God's creation of the heavens and the earth, now the earth was astonishingly empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1, verses 1 through 3. The name for God used in verse 1, and repeated through the other two verses, is Elohim. This is interpreted as the power behind the powers, and is a formal name of God. If Christianity wants to argue that Elohim always means God as a trinity, then how does it explain Exodus 7 verse 1? The Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you a lord over Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother will be your speaker. The word translated as Lord is Elohim. Does this mean that Moses is also God? Wouldn't that mean there are four persons in the Godhead of Christianity? The word for created, bara, is in the singular, as in he created. This alone proves that God is not a plurality, but is one and one alone. The word ruach in verse 2 can mean wind, mind, breath, or spirit. This word is referring to God's throne of glory hovering over the face of the water. In Genesis 8 verse 1 it reads, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The word for wind in this verse is ruach. So unless Christianity wants to now start saying that the Holy Spirit blew the winds back, then it is obvious that Genesis 1 verse 2 is not talking about a person in the Trinitarian Godhead. The word amar in verse 3 means to say, to answer, to say in one's heart, to think, to command to promise, or to intend. It does not mean word. That would be devar. The same exact word is used in Genesis 3 verse 1, which reads, Now the serpent was more shrewd than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the, of the garden, so is Christianity now saying that the serpent is also Jesus, a part of the triune Godhead of Christianity? And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and they shall rule over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the heaven, and over the animals, and over all the earth, and over all the creeping things that creep upon the earth. Genesis 1 verse 26. The us in this verse traditionally is said to be referring to the angels. From here we learn the humility of the Holy One, blessed be He. Since man was created in the likeness of the angels, and they would envy him, he consulted them. Another explanation is that the us refers to God and the earth. We see in verses 24 and 25 that God makes the beasts from the earth, so the earth is in part helping with creation. In Genesis 2 verse 7, we see that God formed man from the dust of the earth. When we die, our bodies go back to the earth and our soul returns to God, as seen in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. As can be seen in the very next verse, it is God, singular, and God alone who made man in his image. Christianity has to do mental backflips to try and force the Trinity into passages where it doesn't exist. It is very simple and very easy to see that the Trinity is an invention of Christianity and found nowhere in the Tanakh.